Hello everyone, I'm your host Dave, aka Bracer Dave on the socials. Today we're painting Iron Man from Simon's Marvel United. And I have to say, right off the bat, I'm pretty happy with how he turned out. I have wanted to do a candy effect uh, for a while, and he was the perfect candidate for this. Candy paints are glossy, translucent colors. They're used in automotive applications and superhero armor. I also show you how to paint the simple but eye-catching energy blast on the base. I've removed the flash lines as best as I could and I've primed the model in white. First, I base coat with a metallic paint because it's a good base for this technique. Some of the metallic texture will be visible through the candy layer. For this job, I picked Vallejo Metal Color Semi-Matte Aluminum because it's a very bright metallic, almost white, which is good because we want the next color to do the talking. Before doing that, however, I'm going to shade all the panel lines uh, in the armor. I'm using non-oil gloss for this, it has the ideal fluidity for a pin wash, meaning it tends to run in and fill those recesses. That said, you can use any black paint or shade you like, because even if you don't do a perfect job, you can go back with the metal paint to easily fix those mistakes. Okay, so the next step is the most important. There is one paint, and one paint only I am recommending for this job, and it is Tamiya Clear Red, aka X27. You will need a thinner because it's a bit thick and goopy uh, out of the pot. You can use water, this is a water based acrylic paint, but I recommend using Tamiya's own thinner, aka X28. I found that a 50 50 mix worked well. It may look a little patchy at first, but this paint turns out to be very brush friendly uh, and after a couple of layers you will start getting a very smooth and uniform coat. The deep transparent red combined with the built-in gloss make it a really great look uh, for this model. For the yellow panels, I experimented with something that wasn't Tamiya Clear Yellow, but then reverse course pretty quickly once I realized that the results weren't quite satisfactory. This works exactly like the red, dilution and all, except we're doing the yellow panels. Finally, I've used white for the eyes and to cover the chest and hand energy gizmos, and I'm tinting them with a very thin blue glaze. This makes for really nice contrast uh, with the red and yellow. And we're going to reuse these very colors for the base. This is going to be a job for the airbrush, so I have done some masking. I used some tape and some parafilm. I love this stuff for masking. Remind me to do a video about it sometime. However, just before that, I manually painted a few layers of white because getting full coverage with the airbrush is not as trivial as it sounds, especially with white. This pre-base coat really helped because all I need now is a few quick layers to complete the coverage and make my patchy brushwork disappear. Then we switch to the glazes, but we are going to be highlighting with them. We're doing a pretty conventional shadows to highlights workflow, except instead of going from dark to bright, we start with bright and go darker. Most of the glazing is done with watercolors, fluorescent blue, a very bright, very saturated color, which is also fairly transparent. Perfect for what we're doing here, really. There's some rubbles around the blast, so we're painting them a dark brown, washing them with some black and highlighting with a mix of the brown and white and blue from the previous steps to give them a hint of uh, a OSL type highlight. And I paint the rim a classic black, 
This is still the best way to frame any painted miniature, in my opinion. My favorite paint for this job is Army Painter's Matte Black, because it really is uh, both of these things. And that is it! Our Iron Man is done! I gotta say, it is a really cool effect. And I'm not the biggest fan of gloss on my minis, but if there's a better model for it, I don't know what it is. What I really enjoyed about this project is that I didn't use any complicated techniques, only simple layering, really, but the specific colors and finishes make it look like a million dollars. It's really eye-catching on the tabletop. I have a Patreon through which you can support me, this channel, and the hobby podcast that I do as well is called Layers, and you can find links to it and the Patreon campaign in the video description. In fact, you might want to listen to episode 19 because in it, I'll be discussing, among other things, what sets the Tamiya clears apart from other colors and what made them pretty much the only suitable paint for this particular project. So come around and give us a listen. I'll see you in the next video, and in the meantime, happy painting.